Hello there, my name's Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. Now I've been doing some testing and I found out that Windows is a lot slower than Linux. If you want to find out more, please let me explain. So the context of this is that uh, Apple have decided to no longer use Intel x86-64 processors in their Macs and they're going to use their own processors developed in-house using an ARM instruction set based CPU. Apple Silicon seems to be the term that they are using. Now with that happening I wanted to create a benchmark that I knew would work across many many platforms natively compiled without any kind of emulation so that when the new Macs come out I can actually run this program, this suite of programs, and gauge the performance of the new Macs. Now to do that, I set about writing a, a suite of programs, we'll talk more about in a second, using C and C++, so they're pretty much uh, universally uh, able to compile across multiple operating systems. So the idea was to support Windows, was to support Mac OS, was to support Linux, and then to support them where possible on uh, Intel 32-bit and 64-bit, x86 32-bit and 64-bit, so including AMD, and then also on ARM. So that would mean, for example, Mac OS on uh, x86-64 uh, and Mac OS on ARM, Windows on x86 32-bit uh, and x86 64-bit and Windows on uh, ARM like for example on the Surface Pro uh, X and then also on Linux and for the Raspberry Pi and for Intel so, so basically try to get it to work across all the different uh, combinations of operating system and uh, system architecture. So I started doing that, I found some toolkits that I want to use, and I'm obviously using C, C++, pretty universal, and then I started to make the programs, and then this is the first version I made for Windows uh, using the system, and then sort of verifying it along the way on Linux to see how things were going, and I've got some results, which I'll, I'll show you now. So these really are just kind of some different processors that I was able to get the hold of. So we've got a Ryzen uh, 5 there, we've got an Intel iCore 7, we've got an Intel iCore 7, 7th generation, Intel iCore 7, 10th uh, generation. And the test result is in seconds. So you can see the Ryzen 5 is 155 seconds there. So that was the slowest of the three. And then the two i7s come in at different times. And you can see that there is a difference in performance between the different uh, processors. Now obviously in PC land there is just so many different processors that can be tested not only in just a current product range so Intel's got the i3, the i5, the i7, the i9 and then all that kind of stuff but then also historically so the first generation, the second generation, the third generation, all the way, tenth generation, you know whatever. So there's a and then AMD have got their own ones as well so there's a huge number of processors that could be tested and then each of those have got you know kind of their low power version and their unlocked version and you know an Intel's naming scheme is a nightmare. In fact, I've got a whole video about that on this channel to try to understand how they name all these processors. So obviously this is just a very, very tiny, tiny example, but it does show how the test suite works. And the idea is it's like Speed Test G for mobile. There is a program that launches other programs and they do things like, you know, ray tracing and there's some emulation stuff going on and there's sorting and the prime numbers and all these kind of different tasks, blurring of images, all these different tasks that can happen. And then once they all run one after the other, the total time it took for them to run is the score. So there's no indexes, there's no refactoring it according to this, it's just a time score. So the faster the processor, the quicker it will do it. So having got the Windows version up and running, I thought, well, I've got this PC here, I could reboot this into Linux now and run exactly the same code, compile it and run it. And in a good world, ignore there would be some differences, I thought, you know, 5%, 10% differences, maybe because of some, you know, dips, compilers, libraries, whatever. But hopefully, this is going to be the same code, we're going to see similar numbers. So that's what I did, I, I, I recompiled for Linux on the same hardware, I ran the tests, and these are the results I got. So the orange bar is the time taken to run the program uh, in uh, Windows, and the yellow bar is the time taken to run it in uh, Linux and I've got two systems here, one's an AMD Ryzen 5, one's a much much older Intel Q9300 uh, but in both cases you can see that the Linux run times are significantly less, in fact for the Ryzen 5 that it's almost exactly half the time uh, of the Windows run time so that number surprised me. And hence the subject of this video because here we're seeing that running the same code 
C, C++ code with a kind of, you know, a cross platform uh, UI framework is actually running twice as fast under Linux. Now, of course, that alarmed me because when you talk about benchmarking, you want to benchmark the processor from one machine to another machine to another operating system to change the architecture. You want these numbers to have some kind of uniformity to them following the pattern you'd expect. So this was quite alarming. So I had to do some further thinking. So obviously the first thing is, you know, is optimization turned on? Is debugging turned off? You know, all these kind of things. And yes, they're all correct as I spent some time looking at it and they are all correct. I also made sure there was no things that maybe could get optimized out by one compiler or on one operating system. And as far as I can see, these are consistent results. Now, what's interesting is, of course, is that the difference is, is that on Linux, you're using the GNU compiler suite, so GCC, G++, and on Windows, we're using Microsoft Visual Studio. So the next thing I did was I took one of those programs as an example program out of the suite, and I removed all the UI stuff and turned it into just a command line program. So there could be no arguments about, you know, that the, the UI is slow or whatever like that, just a command line, printed out a few lines of information, but most of the work is not related to what comes out. It's just the work the CPU is doing. And then I compiled it with um, uh, Microsoft Visual Studio and then again with GCC on Linux. And I also got GCC for Windows to compile it. So I've now got three versions, two on Windows, one on Linux, two different compilers. And these are the results I got. And so the orange bar at the top again is the Microsoft C++ on Windows. And then the other two are GCC on Linux and GCC on Windows. So we can see that there is a huge difference between uh, Microsoft C compiler and the GCC compiler suite. So what does that tell me? Well, it tells me first of all that there is a problem in terms of optimization for uh, Microsoft's compiler. It also tells me that there is a whole bunch of developers out there developing using Visual Studio and they've turned on optimization and they've, you know, they've done all the normal things and actually those programs are going to be running much slower than they would be if they were compiled by a different compiler. So in that sense, in its default setup, Windows programs compiled under Visual Studio will be much slower than programs compiled under GCC on Linux or in fact it turns out under also under Windows itself. Now obviously this isn't the end of the story. There's many, many more things that I can look into. For example, Intel have a compiler that works on Linux and Mac OS and on a Windows, so I need to look into that. Of course, I want this all to run on the Mac as well, and that is a whole separate video. So for that video, I'm gonna be talking about how i am got this running on the Mac, get some numbers out for some different Macs that we can talk about, and then again, check the different compilers, Apple's compiler inside of Xcode, maybe GCC, let's see what we can get available. And then when the ARM version of the Macs come out to know what we've got on the Intel world as we move over into the ARM uh, ecosystem. So basically there's gonna be a couple of more videos about Speedtest G PC. That's the PC version of Speedtest G, how it works, the problems I found while developing it, the results I'm seeing while using it. And we're gonna talk about the Mac, as I said, also I wanna do a video about the Surface Pro X and its performance. Of course, that's got the SQ1 processor from Microsoft based on the Qualcomm Snapdragon processor in that laptop running Windows, of course. So that will be a separate video as well. And I'll basically keep you updated either in videos in here or on the uh, community tab inside of YouTube, maybe on Twitter, to tell you how things are progressing. Okay, that's it. My name's Gary Sims. This is Gary Explains. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. And if you like this kind of stuff, if this kind of stuff interests you, then why not stick around by subscribing to the channel? Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.